In this video, I will be reviewing the photo box, the essential collection, 250 images you need to see, um, published by Thames and Hudson, available on Amazon and pretty much any bookseller. Although I think there's copy with both from Waterstones, but I am not so sure. Hi all, just a, uh, another book review. My number two book review. Nobody said they hated the first one, so I thought, why not? So, the book we're talking about today is Photo Box, The Essential Collection, 250 Images You Need to See. Bought from me the Christmas present from Amazon. It's a very um, interesting book, particularly if like me, you didn't go to art school or to photography school. Um, the book basically shows 250 images that the editors feel are important historically to the, uh, the photo story or the story of photography. The book's divided up into several sections, so you can just go to the section of photography that you're most interested in, the sections being um, reportage, war, portraits, nudes, women, travel, cities, art, fashion, still life, sport and nature. Um, some of the sections are bigger than others, as you might imagine. Um, it's a great little book to look through. It um, doesn't take a great deal of time to read it. I am um, dyslexic, so I got through it um, really quite quickly. Um, it's a pretty straightforward um, setup. You have an image on a page, there's some text about the image um, and about the photographer. Um, so, from my perspective, what I think is best about this book is it gives you a starting point. I didn't go to photography school, as I said before, I didn't go to art school. Um, so everything I know about photography, I've learned myself, either through people I know, practice, or reading online um, and the occasional photography book. Um, I'm particularly into portraits, and although it's not the biggest section in this book, um, at all reportages, um, and then followed by travel. I spent more time on portraits than any other um, because I simply found the names of some great portrait photographers who I perhaps hadn't heard of before. I had seen the image but never knew the name of who took the photo. Um, it gave me a starting point to go and look at more of their work, read a bit about the philosophy of what they did, um, why they did it, the way they did it, etc. Um, so yeah, it's a really good coffee table book. Recommended to anybody who's got an interest in expanding their mind. Um, I did talk to a photographer the other day who said he deliberately doesn't look at the history of photography or books about photography like this because he doesn't want to be influenced. Um, I found that to be one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard, um, to be honest. But he's adamant about it that he doesn't want to be influenced. I think it's impossible not to be influenced. Um, photography, imagery, it's around us all day, every day, everywhere we go. And there's a saying, um, Great things are done when you're standing on the shoulders of giants. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel all the time and do things exactly, and, and you think you've created something, but actually somebody else was doing it 100 years ago um, and possibly doing it better than you're doing it anyway, would it not be better just to um, actually understand what they did, why they did it, and maybe put your own spin on it, um, improve on it, build upon it? Um, yeah, the whole idea that I don't want to be influenced, I want it to be my, my true, pure vision is just... Um, odd to me. But anyway, horses for courses, as they say. So yeah, I have no idea how much this book cost. It's got £18.95 written on the back of it. Um, it was bought as a present, so therefore I don't know what it cost. Um, it may be cheaper or not on Amazon, but I always feel guilty if I look at the price of something somebody bought me, so I haven't, and I won't. Um, so anyway, thanks for listening.